Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about derivatives of vector functions. So let's say we have a curve described by the vector function r of t. And let's say our position at a particular time t is shown by this blue vector here. Okay, now the derivative is going to measure the instantaneous rate of change of our position with respect to t. Okay, so to measure that, let's go ahead and look at our position just a moment later. So in other words, let's look at our position at time t plus delta t, you see that shown by this red vector here. Now if I want to measure the rate of change of position, let's first look at the just change in position, right? So that's going to be this purple vector you see go from the head of blue to the head of red, it's just the difference in these position vectors. Okay, so if that's the change in position, the rate of change is found by dividing this change vector by delta t, the change in time. Okay, now dividing by delta t amounts to just scaling this purple difference vector by the factor 1 over delta t. And you want to think about delta t as something small, so that's just going to stretch this purple vector out by this factor 1 over delta t. Okay, so purple and white have the same direction. All right, so now this will at least give us an approximation to our instantaneous rate of change in position at time t, right? To get a better and better approximation, what we want to now do is let the time interval delta t approach zero, okay? So you want to just really think back to calc one, right? How we measure the slope of the tangent line to a curve at a point, right? You first look at a secant line, right? And then you measure its slope. And then you look at a whole series of secant lines and you, and you measure their slopes and what happens to those secant slopes as you let the time interval approach zero. That limiting slope is, by definition, the tangent slope. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do here, right? This white vector is the essentially the analog of the secant line you see in Calc 1. So what is going to happen to the direction of this white vector as we let delta t approach zero. Well, r of t in blue, that's fixed. What happens to this red position vector as delta t gets small? Well, the head of this vector in red is going to approach the head of the vector right in blue. What's gonna happen to this purple difference vector? Well, it's gonna start to look more and more tangential to our green curve as delta t gets smaller and smaller. So I say here, as delta t approaches zero, this white vector here approaches a vector that points in the tangential direction to the curve at r of t. So here is that vector in purple. We're gonna call this the derivative vector, r prime of t. Okay, now notice I say here, in the tangential direction with increasing t, to the curve at r of t. So what am I saying there? Well, let's say our curve in green is parameterized in such a way that our moving object follows along green in the direction indicated by these red arrows. Okay, if that's the case, right, then our derivative vector will point in the direction tangent to the green curve in the direction of increasing t, as opposed to this direction, which would be right, the opposite direction. So the way I think about this derivative vector, right, this tangent vector is as follows. Let's think about a car driving along this green road. Okay, the derivative vector r prime of t points in the direction of your headlights. Okay, cool. So now how do we go about computing the derivative vector? Well, we can do this in terms of components. So let's say r of t has components f of t, g of t, h of t. So r of t plus delta t, we'll just plug in t plus delta t in the, each of your component functions to get this vector. Okay, and so then this difference divided by the delta t, right? Well, that's all going to simplify to the following vector, right? Where each component, notice, is simply the difference quotient for each of the component functions. And now if you take the limit of those difference quotients as you let uh, delta t approach zero, okay, those are just going to give you the derivatives of your component functions for the components of the derivative vector r prime of t. So in other words, 
if you have a vector function r of t and you want to take its derivative, all you have to do is differentiate component-wise. Okay, so here's a quick example. Let's say r of t is equal to, let's say t, t squared, t cubed. r prime, according to this result, we have right here, sorry, I'll make that prime look a little nicer. All we have to do is differentiate component-wise. So 1, 2t, 3t squared. Okay, not bad. All right, so now the last thing I want to say here is that if we're thinking specifically about r of t as measuring the position of a moving object over time, okay, well, our prime of t, that's measuring then the instantaneous rate of change of our position at time t. And so that, by definition, is just the velocity of the object at time t. So we can call that v of t. Now if you differentiate again, well, then you're looking at the instantaneous rate of change of the velocity with respect to t. That, by definition, is the acceleration of the object at time t. And that's also equal to the second derivative of r. Okay, so with all of that in place, I'll stop there and pick up with more of this in the next video. Thanks so much.